Hello, good morning, and thank you for joining me today uh, for this webinar. I'm Fiona Hawkins. Um, I'm a partner here at James Cooper Creston and head of our outsourcing service line. So cash and cash flow forecasts. The Financial Times on Monday, 27th of April, so this beginning of this week, reported survey findings that over 50% of SMEs could run out of cash within 12 weeks, which is a, a sobering thought. Um, so it wasn't probably April where the big problem was, although some firms will have perhaps struggled to pay some wage costs, wage bills this week, or May, that would be the problem, but July and August um, and September, when the furlough period under current expectations has stopped, staff are back on full pay. Um, and yet the business is perhaps yet to pick up. So if cash flow forecasting and scenario planning is important now, and it is, um, it will be even more so in the weeks and the months to come. But there is help available, there's time to access that help. Um, here at James Cooper Creston, we're really pleased to be in a position to support our clients with this, and we have some excellent tools to help us, which is what I'm going to introduce you to here. So cash flow forecasts are crucial to understand how business um, how cash flows impact your business's performance, the financial health and its ability to survive and ultimately to thrive. If you don't know what your expected cash position is, you don't even know if you need a loan, let alone whether you can afford the interest repayments when they kick in or the capital repayments. So forecasting and then looking at different scenarios, um, forming a strategy and monitoring actual against forecasting is essential. You'll probably be familiar with um, manual cash flows, typically Excel spreadsheets. Um, they're commonly used and can be excellent, but they also have limitations. And the key of these in the current climax is climate is how complex they are and hence how costly they can be to create and also how quickly they become out of date. So I'm going to show you two cash flow forecasting solutions which we can offer. Um, firstly, we've partnered to develop our own forecasting and reporting app. It's built in the cloud and sits on top of cloud accounting applications such as Xero and QuickBooks Online using the most advanced three-way or indirect forecasting and reporting tools available on the market today. Indirect forecasts use um, profit and loss account balance sheet figures together with cash to build a three-way forecast and they're generally used for longer-term cash forecasting, looking at the impacts of changes on the business as a whole and particularly for looking at different scenarios, um, comparing strategies. They're often going to, can be combined with targeted key performance indicators, and then also updated with actuals to monitor the ongoing business against the chosen strategy. And then direct forecasts are often best for detailed, much more short-term forecasting, and they use actual past cash flows as a basis for forecasting the future. And for short-term direct forecasting, We've partnered with Fluidly. Fluidly is an app which is available as a free light version and a monthly subscription for the pro version. And as Fluidly partners, we can provide access to all of Fluidly's capabilities, including free access to the light version for every one of our Xero clients and um, discounted access to pro subscriptions. So let's start there. What does Fluidly do? Fluidly describes itself as an intelligent cash flow management tool providing instant automated forecasts, straightforward scenario planning and tailored funding options. I'm not going to look at the funding options here, but I can certainly do so afterwards with anybody who's who's interested in, in looking at that further. So Fluidly uses artificial intelligence to forecast what is going to happen and it syncs hourly with zero, so it's always up to date. And a key advantage is that can it produce it can produce cash flow in minutes, not hours. But what you have to remember and it's really important is that this is basing the future cash flow on past patterns and this in the current scenario is not going to be realistic in current circumstances so it needs to be tailored to reflect what you either think you know or know is going to happen so if we look at this graph we can see it covers 12 months of data but actually the orange bit is nine months worth of past data and it's only the blue bit here which is the forecast this is because this is the light version and the forecast in fluidly light is limited to 90 days um, to get a longer forecast, you have to upgrade. So, and then what, it's what it tells us is tells us what the opening cash today in zero is, and it's looking at five out of five bank accounts here. You can um, select or deselect which bank accounts you wanted to look at. It tells you the date that it was last reconciled. This would normally be today, but this is the date that I pulled the data from it. 
And then this bit's really important. It's saying it's got invoices with no expected date. And these ones are hidden from the forecast. So at the moment, this forecast has got £73,666 not in, in the forecast. So this is the first area where this is because the reason that is, is because they either haven't got expected dates on them in zero or the expected payment date has already passed. So fluidly can't predict when it's going to be paid. And so, so it excludes it. So what you have to do is click into that. It's the first place you need to do some work and you have to click into that and set some expected dates. Once that's done, then you've got an updated forecast based on expected receipts and payments. So it's generated by AI and it's looking at patterns and past behaviors. And then this last box tells you that on the current forecast situations, the cash is in this company isn't going to fall between, below zero for more than a year. And you can set that threshold at a, at a different level. So you could set it at £30,000 or 50000 whatever you want it to. And what that would do is give you an alert when your cash fell below whatever your threshold was. So, so that's, that's all very well. But remember, it is looking at past, past patterns. Um, and so it's, necess it's not necessarily going to be accurate at the moment. So you have to make some changes. You have to do some more work to it. So then you go into the breakdown. So here's what's happening. Here's what's happening between, um, apologies for that. Here's what's happening between um, in April. It's telling us what our opening cash was, what it's expecting the total cash to come in, of which how much has been paid so far, and the total that it's expecting to go out, and also how much has been paid so far. And then lower down, what it's telling you is this is for one day, this is for the the 25th of April, what's it expecting to come in? This is this would be a specific customer, um, a specific sales type, and it's expecting to receive £520. Now, if you know that that's not going to come in or you don't think that's going to come in on that day, then you can click into it and remove it from the forecast. So what it tells you is, is on a really very detailed basis, you can adjust it in debt by debt, invoice by invoice, to make sure you don't pay out more than, than you have. So it's... Um, so what fluidly say is is that they want to be people to be able to sleep at night, not without worrying about cash in or out of the business the next day. That's their sort of mantra. The next thing you can do, so that tells you what you've got on a really detailed day by day basis. The next thing you can do is is create a, a simple plan. Again, on the free light version, this is limited to a maximum of 90 days. So for this to be useful you really need to either upgrade or or look at the three-way forecasting that we'll be lo looking at in a minute but for a quick forecast if you're just wanting to look at cash and not either the PL or the balance sheet effect of changes this is an illustration of what can be done very quickly you can just adjust revenue either by a percentage change or by an amount you can adjust an account line you can take out a customer if, uh, or, or a supplier you can model the effect of taking out a loan or getting a grant or an investment. Um, and it does it very quickly, very, very quickly, instantly, but as I say, it's just looking at cash. So you can see, I mean, this will give you some really valuable information for cash management at those ultra critical times. Just a point, we're mainly looking at forecasting here, but I want to show you one other quick feature of, of Fluidly, which is designed to help with another aspect of, of cash management, that of the collection of debt. So, um, here let's just look quickly at what's called intelligent chase and again you get a basic access to this with the light version um, for full functionality you need the full version and as you can see what it does is it ranks your debtors in a very simple traffic light system and then suggests that you should these are the debtors the very late payers are the ones that you need to chase you can look at them in more detail and it will tell you what the invoices are um, the date you last chased them um, and then the full version also can alert you to unusual behavior, which can be really, really valuable at the moment because it will alert you if you have a debtor that would normally pay within, say, 45 days and they haven't paid, then you'll get an alert for that, which could be a very useful early warning that perhaps it's a debt that's about to go bad. And then what it does, it allows you to send a, an automated email, which you can tailor to your own preferred wording with links to the overdue invoices. Um, so it simplifies and sort of semi-automates your debt chasing process which can be a real time saver so as you can see what fluidly does it allows you to monitor cash on a really granular detail basis day by day if necessary who has paid who hasn't what you need to pay this week 
Um, but to understand what the business is going to look like under different scenarios and with different assumptions on things like revenue levels, how long debtors will take to pay, what costs can be deferred um, until when, you know, what about if you furlough staff, how many, for how long, um, then we're, for that we're really pleased to be able to show you our own forecasting and reporting solution. So what we've got here is some simple demo data and from that we've produced what we're calling a base forecast. Uh, if you like, a what it would look like if nothing changed. This can be done from past data or it could be done from uploading um, an existing budget. It's, the software is designed to be used really with cloud accounting software like Xero, but it can also be used with manual uploads from non-cloud accounting packages. So the um, and the fact that we have this ability to upload data into it also means that we can model non-financial information, such as, for example, number of customers um, spent per visitor. However, for forecasting and monitoring, it works best really with cloud data. Um, it syncs daily um, to allow forecasts to be updated with actual data as required. So what we've got here is our baseline forecast. And first thing here, we're looking again at cash flow. So it's telling us this is the start of the scenario. This is our opening. This was our opening bank here, but but the blue bars are showing closing bank, and the orange line is showing the net cash movement. And that's showing it. This <clears throat> excuse me. This forecast is done for a year. Um, it can be done for periods up to actually up to ten years. Um, this one and this one's done monthly. You can change the, the regularity of the of the reporting as well. And then below here, we've got the actual detail of the numbers, the receipts, and the payments. And we can drill into that and, and look into the detail to understand perhaps you know what's causing some of the fluctuations. And we can understand the figures more, more in more detail. And then this is the same forecast um, here. This is Again, the orange line is, is the net cash flow. So that's the same line as, as was in the previous uh, slide, um, slightly different scale, so it looks slightly differently. And then overlaid on top of that is the net profit. So we're bringing in the profit and loss element here as well. Um, it's a fairly simple model. It's got a couple of different income streams, um, and then it's got purchases, a reckon, recognizes percentage of sales, um, some direct and overhead labor costs, rent rates, insurance. That, that type of thing, but the actual numbers obviously aren't important here. Um, what I want to show you is what it looks like, um, give you an idea of how valuable this could be to your decision making processes and to your business. So then we've created our baseline forecast. Um, if we want to look at scenario planning, we would then sit down with you um, and work out what different scenarios we needed to look at. So um, what we want to be looking at is what changes might happen. Um, and obviously the scenarios chosen from each business are both by their very nature, they're going to be completely individual. The changes that are going to happen to each, each business are, are going to be individual. Each will have a different combination of factors affecting them and a different combination of approaches available to them to address those factors. Um, so in this case, for just for demonstration purposes, um, we've done a, what we've done is a worst case. Um, we've reduced the sales um, on varying, varying periods, um, extended the debtor days, but made no changes at all to the costs and no changes at all to the timing of any cash going out. So we've called it our worst case scenario. Um, and this shows this shows the cash flow of, of the worst case. So this is effectively the same, the same slide as, as one previously, but in this case, we've got the opening bank and the closing bank um, showing the effect of the cash flows and showing that in, in July, and then again in October, November, we actually dip below having, um, we dip into overdraft. Um, and then it comes up again slightly here um, and then down, down into overdraft again in, in January. If we look at the forecast, this is the cash flow, this is the forecast, the base one against our worst case. In this case, base is our blue line. And worst case is our, is our orange line. And we can see not only as if we reduce the level of the income, coming in, because obviously we've reduced the level of sales. We've also shifted the graph to the right, showing the delayed debtor days as well. So it shows the, how that's impacted both the actual amount of, of income and the receipt of that income as well. And then this, this shows the same thing, um, but in terms of the actual bank balance. 
So again, this is the, the, the base forecast is our, is our blue line. Our worst case is our, is our orange blobs. And again, it shows these bits where we dip into overdraft um, quite considerably so in, in October, then again in, in February and slightly less so in, in other months. So, um, so then what we look at is we've modelled a, a cost reduction, a, a sort of a, a what could help um, scenario. Um, so in this case, what we've done, and we've, we've just said, well, we're furloughing some staff, some non-direct staff, we're cancelling some, some costs, such as entertaining some of the marketing costs, um, cancelling all, all dividends, um, and what we're doing here is comparing it in, against our worst case scenario. So we've, so, so we've had a look at what costs, what we could do to, to, try, and, um, to try and keep our, our cash flow going and keep our income up, our net income. So here we've got this is the worst case, which has now gone blue, and our cost reduction line is is um, is orange. And you can see what we've done by doing our cost reductions. We've managed to keep above above the, the worst of the of the dips. It's smoothed out the dips. So that sort of begins to then build a strategy that that may that may be workable for for the um, for the business. This is looking at um, at the bank balances. Um, worst case. And the cost reduction. So the worst case again, as we can see, where where it was going into overdraft, and the cost reduction, the bank stays above above overdraft in all in all cases. Um, and then this is the same thing, but just shown in a in a bar chart version. Again, the worst case is the blue. The cost reduction one is is the orange. So <clears throat> the forecast shown here, as I said, are for twelve months, um, but they can be for for, for two years, three years, five years, 10 years, up to 10 years. Um, we can also model the effects of deferring VAT and PAYE payments, obtaining loan funding, and then the associated interest payments when they become payable. And also the effect, not just on cash, but on the balance sheet um, and the profit and loss account and any on any key performance indicators that have been chosen as central to the business. So you may be using it to help look to make sure that you're not in danger of breaching any bank covenants, for example. So um, it's quite a quick run through. Hopefully that's shown that it's, um, it's a powerful, it's a very flexible application. It can be very powerful in terms of its forecasting and its, and its reporting. It allows us to create numerous scenarios looking at different options relatively quickly and easily we can update the, the actuals for things that develop and reforecast uh, accordingly um obviously you know once once we've built the basic scenarios um so because obviously one of the problems with forecasting anything is the assumptions that you make and how sure you are about them and of course right now uncertainty is is the key thing we don't know how long lockdown will last even we don't know how the economy will react um, what challenge the, which is, challenges there will be, and also what opportunities there will be coming out of it. So really key is the ability to be nimble, to react quickly to changing circumstances. And for that, you need good data um, on which to base your decisions. And having a robust forecast and a planned, planned strategy will be really of huge value. Um, so obviously that's why we're really pleased that we're able to offer this type of forecasting and advisory help to our clients uh, right now. Um, I'd also say that it's really important to have up-to-date financial information. So things like using direct bank feeds, updating accounting records daily or, or weekly um, to keep on top of things. It's absolutely essential that you're looking at, at up-to-date data whenever you're making a decision. And again, we'd be very pleased to help with, with aspects of that as well. So. In a moment, I'll ask uh, Lizzie if there are any questions, um, but please do get in touch um, if you would like to know more about any of the things you've seen or heard here and how we can help you um, help your business. My contact details are here um, and I'd be like, delighted to hear from you. Um, Lizzie, did we have any questions? Hi, Fiona. Um, we have had one, uh, a couple of questions actually. Um, the first one is, um, what are you advising high-tech clients on R&D expenditure during this crisis period? Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the, what, in, in what way, um, but um, 
whether that's a, whether that's a question about um, R and D tax credits, in which case we are we're, we're working with clients to, to to get the tax credit claims done as as quickly as possible, or whether it's a question about funding. But I'd be very happy to take that offline um, and and pick it up either directly with the client or or put them in touch with our with their own with their with their client partner um in terms of the detail of that because i'm not i'm just not quite sure what what, what the question was okay no problem thank you fiona um oh gosh got a few a uh, few questions coming through so the next question is do you need to have budget set up and defined in zero to get the best statistics statistics no you don't um you can you can use past data and then and then adjust it for that. So you don't need to have put, or you can have a budget not set up in zero. So you can upload a budget that isn't in zero and and use that. So if it's on an Excel spreadsheet or whatever it may be, um, and use that. Or you can use past data to um, to generate your initial forecast and then and then adapt it based on on that. Great, thank you, Fiona. Um, the next question is, will zero quotes be used to populate the cash flow in fluidly? Yes, it will. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Um, the next one is, how do we get started with fluidly light? Just send me an email and I'll, and I'll get it signed up immediately. That's not a problem at all. Send me an email and, it, and it'll be done, done this afternoon. Great. Thank you. And uh, the last question that we've got is what information do you need to feed into your cash flow model if you're not using zero? So then you would be looking at, at, at uploading some data into our model um, and, and we would we would look at what we look at is, is monthly um, P&L and balance sheet figures. So we can do a download from Sage or um, or from whatever the accounting software is. It's a little bit more cumbersome, but it but it's but it works as a, it works as an upload effectively. And what we do, we've got a, a template, a CSV template, which which can be populated to then upload. Great, thank you, Fiona. Um, that was all of our questions for today. So um, feel free to uh, close the webinar if you're happy. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much, everybody.